Brats also tend to be open to other cultures, other religions. We know what it's like to be outsiders. Well, you know, I'd have some people come in sometimes over in the Gulf and say, uh, oh gosh, we've got to solve this cultural problem. See, the Arabs think this way, and we think that way, and we've got to prove to them that we're right. And I used to think that was kind of cheeky when you consider that, that at our culture at that time was 214 years old and theirs was 5,000 years old, and we were going to tell them we're right and they're wrong. I pledge allegiance to every human being I ever run into anywhere. You know, I, I support everybody's rights, not just America's rights. One reason why I did not stay in the ministry was because I became very discouraged. My confirmation class uh, did not want to have any black people entering the church. One of the difficulties is that not only the stereotyping coming from uh, non-blacks, but also it's coming from blacks. What you doing, man? Eat much. I see you eating lunch. Why are you eating over here? Why don't you go on over there eat with your people? Man, I don't have any people. I'm with everybody, Julius. Yeah, he's just a light-skinned brother. Yeah, and I'm a dark-skinned cracker. <laughs> <laughs> I've absolutely been accused of acting white by different individuals that are part of different Hispanic communities. And I consider that an enormous insult to my, my character, uh, simply because you shouldn't have to act any way just because of your culture or your ethnicity or your race or any of that. You should just be exactly who it is that you are. When Michelle was in college, she was asked to give a speech at an important event. This was to be a big deal to have a student deliver the keynote. And so I was a bit um, concerned about, well, what would I talk about? What experiences would you like me to share? I'm kind of new to this. And she said, well, you know, tell them a little bit about your, your background. You're, you're growing up in a broken family in the inner city and the struggle you had to overcome and, you know, academically what it took for you to achieve and the hardship. And, and this is the kind of story that uh, she was looking for. And obviously this was not my story. This does not mean we're not proud of our cultural heritage or don't want to explore it. I'm not trying to avoid race, I'm a black male. So I'm not trying to say it's not important because there's a lot of history and culture that's very important, at least for me and my family. But that's not the primary thing of who George June is, is who am I? Am I an honest person? Uh, do I treat people well? I do have cousins my age who would argue that point with me, who would say, Val, get down off your horse. You've been over there with all them good people, and, and that, you know, life's not that grand, and this is, come look at where we live. Well, I can look at where you live, but do something about it. I mean, don't wait on somebody else to help you. Um, you can make a difference, and you can make a change on your own. There are downsides to all this idealism and conviction, of course. Primarily, reality. For all our worldly experiences, we can be really naive.